Go ahead. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. When I grow up, I want to be a psychologist. Joseph chose to spare Mary. Joseph had not put into action his plan to dissolve his bond with Mary. The angel came to him. Once he heard the angel, Joseph submitted to God's will. God used the Old Testament prophecies to show how Joseph's birth was, how Jesus' birth was recovered. In the New Testament, as a miracle, 
Mary is a big part of this Christmas story. She, she and Joseph faced some problems due to the circumstances surrounding Jesus' birth. Even though Joseph is called her husband, a man who was walking on the table, they were still just engaged, and people would talk because Mary became pregnant before she was actually murdered. Angelic visit and their knowledge of prophecies worked to restore Joseph and Mary to sit with God's plan. This, they risked a lot, but God surrounded them with resources needed to get them right on, to get them on the right track. Mary was a special lady in God's eyes. He chose her to bring forth the Christ that washed our sins away and saved the world. My topic is why I am young, gifted, and black. Some of the reasons I am young, gifted, and black is I can choose to sit in the front or the back of the bus. I have a school to go to where we are not discriminated by race. Martin Luther King did these little things, but they meant so much to the world. At the March on Washington, Martin Luther King marched in a way so us blacks and us blacks that are young can show our gift to the world. Martin Luther King showed me that a dream as small as his can go bigger and bigger and change the world. God, God blessed us to have each a different gift, but Martin Luther King marched and did everything he could to support and let us show our gift to the world. Martin Luther King Day is special to everyone in the world because we can show our gift and inspire others to do the same thing he did. Martin Luther King showed me what a real leader was. Martin Luther King showed me how to support something as little as a dream and make it come true. He showed me everything is possible and anything can be accomplished. This man started out as a song. This man started out as a song that Aretha Franklin sang, but it means more to me than that. Martin Luther King did all this just for us, and that is why I and everybody else in the world, on this day particularly, and everywhere else, can show our gift to the world every day and any day. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Michaela Edgers. I'm a senior at Largo High School in Largo, Maryland, where I participate in numerous clubs such as the National Honor Society, along with playing on the varsity basketball and softball team. Today, I am going to be speaking on the topic of success. What is success? The dictionary defines success as the ach achievement of something desired plan, or attempted. But the popular definition of this word is the gaining of fame or prosperity. I define success as a state of accomplishment and triumph, a place that you can only get through hard work and dedication. Many people say they want to be successful. However, only few put in the work to become so. Success is not given. You must work for it. But in order to do so, there are steps that need to be followed. Step, the first step is goal setting. Setting goals is essential for it organizes your thought process. There are big goals as well as small goals. But in order to reach your big goals, you must set and accomplish the small ones. Now that you have set your goals, you must work towards achieving them. This is done by applying yourself, which leads me to step number two. This is a very important step. In order to apply yourself, you must prioritize. <coughs> this means doing the things of importance first and the things of leisure last. Self-discipline will play an important role in this. Failure and rejection is part of the process as well. Nobody said it was going to be easy and it was going to be given to you. 
Drive and perseverance is what separates those who are successful from those who give up. When you are driven, you do not let anything get in the way from you reaching your goal. So if along the way you experience defeat, dig down deep and continue to fight because there are obstacles that you must face before you can get to where you want to be. The last and final step into becoming successful is surrounding yourself with a strong support system, whether it's family, friends, or the church. Allow yourself to be surrounded by positive people that will help guide you in the right direction. Also, it is good to have people by your side to motivate you when it's hard to do so yourself. Oftentimes when people are successful, they lose sight of how they got there. They forget where they come from. This is because they shy away from the key element of it all, God. No matter how successful you are, you must praise God for all his blessings he has given you. For it's God's grace and mercy that sustains us in this journey. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Without God by your side, you will not make it far. But as long as you set goals, stay driven, have a good support system, and most of all, have faith, you will make it. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm a junior in Easter St. High School. Uh, it's in Washington, D.C. Today I will be sharing with you a march from Washington that made a change in today's society. The march ratio was 75 to 80 percent blacks. The attendance was approximately 2,000 marches. This huge march took place on August 28, 1963 in Washington, D.C., the same day Martin Luther King gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. This march was done for many important reasons, equal rights, jobs, and better lives so that blacks could have the same respect as a white person would have in our society today. <coughs> for some blacks traveling to get to this march were harassed and threatened, mainly from the South. This event included musical performances by Mar Mariah Anderson, Joanne Bees, Bob Dylan, and Mahalia Jackson. Two most noteworthy speeches were spoken by John Lewis and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Civil rights leader James Farmer had gotten arrested in Louisiana at the time of the march. His speech was read by Josephine Baker. The march was a great thing for this world because racism pulled some black, some African Americans down, but there were groups who kept their heads up and continued to fight for what they believed. <coughs> through speech, marches, protests, and much more. <coughs> so their grandchildren, so their grandchildren and generations to come can have a better life than they have growing up. In conclusion, the importance of this march made it possible for me to pursue my education freely. I am able to work with all races of people. I am able to express my, myself as a proud African American male. Thank you, Martin Luther King. I have a dream too. <laughs> How y'all doing, church? Wow. Uh, I wrote my speech on failure versus success. I'm Christopher Thompson, Brooklyn, 17 year old. I go to Sherwood High School in Montgomery County, Maryland. Failure, by definition, is the lack of success. So, failure and success are connected as soulmates, opposites that need each other to persevere to the next level. Failure is like bees that will sting and put you in harm, but the world needs them to keep pollinating in the earth. Failure is like death, but only through death can you receive an eternity of life in heaven. Failure will bend and break you down to the point of total destruction until you learn how to build yourself back up in the correct way to give you a stronger and sturdier happiness. Failure creates success. Failure is your teacher, and success is your six-figure job. You pay attention to what failure has to teach you in your present. Seeing others' faults and our own faults gives us examples of what we need 
to do to avoid competitive action of failure to help us reach success. I've encountered many failures in my 17, going on 18 years of life. And that amount of time that has been a lot that I've seen and done personally as a child and young adult that has changed my perspective on people and life forever. And I've experienced a sense of shame after every failure situation I've encountered. Shame is like a branch that is attached to failure that helps you grow leaves with good conscious decisions and thought. After every fault and feeling of shame of leaf of good decisions and thoughts into your mind, giving you a tutorial of instruction that will keep growing in the right light if we listen and pay attention. All of my life I've had faults, tests, and trials that ended up with no result and rewards. I felt like my success was a figure of my imagination that kept my emotions in my mind in good spirits. A sense of positive thinking to keep me sane. How could I keep myself to believe God had a plan for me when all I've encountered was failure? Trying to be a good Samaritan to avoid failure, but still following me like a terminal disease. In a sense, I was right. Failure is like a terminal disease. But it can be sustained and subdued to a point where you can accept its presence and use it for the, your best interest without it tearing you down to a point of submission. We have to understand God lets failure into our lives to reassure us that we are human and way beneath his power and will. And our main purpose here is to train and <coughs> enough to become holy soldiers on the front line of God's army to fight any demons our path. Success is the last reward obtained. Success is victory to an individual that has been through many experiences of failure to the point where they have earned their right to receive their dream that they've been praying for over a duration of time. This doesn't mean failure becomes obsolete in our lives, just a little easier to handle based on the knowledge we have learned from our previous failure. I've had many failures in this music business already, having to do with lost friendships, sneaky, greedy businessmen or managers, can't forget about the large sum of haters who want to steal your ideas because they want, weren't blessed with the talents you've been given, so they envy you and try to destroy your kingdom. Even though I still don't feel like I've reached my ultimate goal of success, I still feel like I've accomplished enough goals to be proud of. Because of my intelligence, decisions, choices, and my consistency, to learn from all my mistakes that I've done, I believe I can receive more success in the right way. <clears throat> Instead of trying to cheat my way to it, I end up doing everything negative to achieve it the easy way. So embrace and recognize failure. Who knows? It can probably help you become the CEO of your own enterprise. Thank you.